In this video, we're going to introduce the functions and how to use the Tektronix scope. It's a TDS 2014B oscilloscope. It's a four-channel oscilloscope, which means that it has it's capable of displaying four different signals at the same time. It's known as a 100 megahertz scope, which means that it can analyze and work with signals up to 100 megahertz in frequency. In order to accomplish that, it samples at one billion samples or one giga sample per second. The um, the oscilloscope is designed to display variable voltages or time varying voltages and so we're also going to be using a function generator. The function generator we're going to be using is able to produce sine wave, square wave, and also triangular shaped waves at a number of different frequencies. We can adjust the frequencies, give the range of frequencies here, and then adjust it down to a fairly precise frequency. The output comes from here. We'll be using coaxial cables to run from the function generator on over to our oscilloscope. So to get started with this oscilloscope, the first thing you've got to do is turn it on. The button, the power button, is located up there in the upper left-hand corner up above it. And push it down for just a second, hold it, and then wait. It takes about almost a minute for it to go through its startup. And uh, so we're going to just pause that. So after about a minute or so, it's gone through its startup routine and it's come up in a state that unless you were the last person to use it, you have no idea what state it's in. So we're going to start, first of all, by adjusting the contrast on the screen by pushing the display button, which then makes it so that you can adjust the contrast by turning the, uh, the multi-function knob there and bring the contrast down to something where we can see it. Alrighty, having done that, again we don't know exactly the condition that it came up in. What were the settings before? There's a default setup button on this and when you walk up to a new scope go ahead and just push the default setup button and bring it to a known condition. And Again it takes just a second and it's then ready to go. Now on this oscilloscope you'll notice that there are four main different areas with buttons. There's lots of buttons. We mentioned before that this is a four-channel oscilloscope, and so there are four different places that you can connect your signal. So we're going to be using a coaxial cable with what's known as a BNC connector on it, and it goes on to there. And we're going to connect the other end that the oscilloscope has a bunch of different knobs and buttons, enough that it could almost be intimidating. But they are arranged in functional groups. And you'll notice there's one group here from its silk screening. All of these knobs are all tied into an area which is marked as the vertical control. Those knobs control the vertical scale on the oscilloscope. Over here, there's a second group of knobs marked horizontal. Those control the scaling and operation of the horizontal axis. So as you can see, the oscilloscope is basically an XY plot. Generally speaking, we're going to be talking about time varying signals. So the horizontal axis will be in the time domain, and the vertical axis will be voltage. Oscilloscopes will display only voltage. If you want to look at current, you find a place that the current is proportional to the voltage and look at the current. So for what we're going to be doing today, we're going to be talking about displaying time varying voltages, voltages that will vary in amplitude and frequency as a function of time. All right, now that we've pressed the default setup so that the oscilloscope has come up in a known, although it may not be the way we want it, at least it's at in a known condition. And we're now ready to start looking at signals. So to do that, we're going to come over here and use our signal generator, turn on the power. I've connected the other end of the coaxial cable to the output here. And I want to, to uh, display a sine wave. And we'll do it about 1 kilohertz, so 1,000 hertz. So I push the sine wave button. It comes up and tells me that it's about 3,113 hertz, or 3.1 kilohertz. So let's just go ahead and adjust it down. I'd like to get pretty close to 1,000 hertz. Using the course adjustment to get close. 
That's pretty close. 1042, 11.13. Now let's just try to adjust it on down using the fine adjustment and we get down to a thousand hertz. So coming back over here, you'll notice it looks like just a bunch of straight lines. It doesn't look like a sine wave. So to do that, we now need to check our um, vertical scale adjustment. When it comes up in the default setting, it's assuming that it has a 10x probe. Now a probe is another fancy name for a wire. A probe is something that you can use to connect to your circuit. A 10x probe takes the voltage that it's reading and divides it by a factor of 10 so that the things that we would be looking on here would be 10 times as big as they really are. We're going to just be using a regular coax cable with no attenuation on it so we need to change it to a 1x um, change the probe to a 1x probe. To do that, push the channel 1 menu button. It's the yellow button right above channel 1. And you'll notice that it says the probe is set to, and you may not be able to read it, but it's telling us right there that the probe is a 10x probe. We want to change that to a 1x probe by pushing that button next to the, that probe. And it says 10x attenuation. Push that button. You push it and keep pushing it until it comes up to a 1x option. There's the 1x. And then push the back button. And we're now, and it tells us that we're displaying using a 1x probe. You'll notice over here, and you, maybe you can't see it, but down here in the lower left-hand corner, it tells us that on channel 1, the vertical scale is 100 millivolts per division. Now we're going to adjust this until it's about an 8 volt peak to peak signal. And we'd like to display then this 1 kilohertz cycle at an amplitude of about 4 volts plus and 4 volts minus or 8 volts peak to peak. Now you'll notice on the oscilloscope it's divided vertically into 8 divisions. 1, 2, 3, 4 to the middle, 5, 6, 7, 8. So if we want to display an 8 volt peak to peak signal, we want to adjust the scale on this so that it shows 1 volt per division across the 8 divisions would give us 8 volts peak to peak. This knob right here is the knob that we'll use to adjust the, uh, the vertical scaling. It's in the vertical silk screened area it has to do with channel 1. We're connected to channel 1, and so we'll use this knob. If we were talking about channel 2, 3, or 4, we'd be using those knobs. The functions of these knobs are all duplicated for each of the channels. So looking at the number over here, again, you may not be able to see it in the video, but we're going to adjust this to where it is 1 volt per division. And now we see that the signal coming out of the signal generator is only 1 almost 2 volts in the positive direction and almost 2 volts in the negative direction. Now it came up in the default with the center location, the center voltage or zero voltage right here at the center line. Had it not, or if we wanted to adjust that, we can adjust the vertical position by turning this knob right there. But we're interested in a signal that has the zero volts right around that horizontal line, so we'll leave that little arrow pointing there. Now coming over here to the signal generator, I have the output level here and I'm going to adjust it until that sine wave spans the entire top to bottom or about like that. So we now have a sine wave that's oscillating at a thousand cycles per second at a peak voltage of 4 volts or a peak to peak voltage of 8 volts. On the display, and again you may not be able to see it, but on the display it's also displaying the frequency of that signal and it's telling us that it's a 998.61 hertz cycle or a frequency. So the oscilloscope is going to be a lot more precise in what it's able to measure than what we're going to be able to dial in. Okay, we've talked about the vertical axis and controlling the vertical axis. Let's now talk about the scaling on the horizontal or the time domain axis. That is adjusted using 
the knobs over here in the silk screened area that says horizontal. And it's very much similar to what we saw for the horizontal for the vertical. There's a position button that will move the display left or right. And there is a knob that establishes or sets the scaling on the horizontal axis. Over here, the units were volts per division. Here, the units are going to be seconds per division. It came up at 500 microseconds per division, and we can adjust that. We can make it so that there are fewer microseconds per division, which has the effect of expanding the, the sine wave. Continuing that way, we can expand the sine wave as much as we want to see and focus in on a certain part of the sine wave. And if we want to see another part of the sine wave, we can then position it back and forth, turning the, the uh, horizontal positioning knob. Now let's demonstrate how we can use the oscilloscope to measure time and, in effect, then frequency by measuring the frequency of this sine wave that we've got displayed. Currently, we're not able to see the entire sine wave, so let's go ahead and bring it back to where we can see a complete cycle. When we're talking about AC signals and sinusoidal signals, one cycle or one period is the length of time that it takes to go from one point all the way through and back to where we started. So we can count the time from peak to peak. We could count the time from, from trough to trough. You'll find that when you're doing it on an oscilloscope, it's easier to get more accurate measurements if we go from crossing an axis to crossing an axis. Now, you need to be careful. For the full period, we need to go from a negative going crossing, not to the positive going crossing. That's just half the cycle. But from negative going crossing to negative going crossing. So with that, then, we can, um, so going from negative going crossing to negative going crossing, we notice then that we have from starting here, and let's line it up using our position. We're going to position it so that starting here at the center crosshair, I've got it lined up so that the signal is going, we'll go from positive. The signal is going from negative to positive right at the origin. And we'll notice that it goes one, two, three, four major divisions to get to the next positive going zero crossing. So the period is one, two, three, let's see, is one, two, three, four divisions. You may not be able to see it, but down here, it's telling us that the scaling on our time axis is 250 microseconds per division. So 250 microseconds per division times four divisions is 1,000 microseconds, or one millisecond. We've just used the oscilloscope to determine that the period of this signal is one millisecond in length, which is consistent with it being a one kilohertz, um, having, having a one kilohertz frequency period and frequency are inverses of each other. In a similar way, we can measure the amplitude of our waveform. Let's go ahead and just reduce this down to some smaller voltage. And let's now measure what the ampl amplitude of our waveform is. You'll notice that, and again, we're going to adjust it so that there's a place where we can easily count the divisions. One and it's about 1.2 or 1.4 divisions. It's kind of hard to measure it at that point. So let's change the scale from 1 volt per division. Let's change it to a half a volt per division, or 500 millivolts per division. Once again, line it up. That gives us a little bit more swing. And so we can now say that the amplitude of this new signal is one major division, two major division, and you'll notice the major divisions are divided up into five little hash marks, where each of those smaller hash marks is two tenths of a division. So the amplitude here would be one division, two divisions, and then it looks like 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, about 0 0.8, or 2.8 divisions times a half a millivolt 
or a half a volt per division. So that would be a half a volt, one volt, and then 0.8 more. It's about 2.4 or 2.5 volts in amplitude peak. And then the other side would be comparable in size, and so the peak-to-peak -peak voltage would just be two times that.